So this is a PowerPoint that's going to take you through the Griffin School's results in the summer of 2022. First of all, we're going to look at GCSE results. You can see here the pattern over the last four years. Obviously, 2019 was the last uh, real examination year. I've left out summer 2020 and summer 2021 because those were school, you know, tags or, or CAGs. Uh, rather than examination results, so they're not directly comparable. So these are the last four years of examined results. If you look at the average attainment eight, you can see there's good solid progress from the Griffin School. So in summer 2017, it was 48.71. So obviously attainment eight is your best eight grades with maths and English doubled. So there are 10 grades in there. So it means on average students were achieving a grade of 4.8. And you can see by the summer of 2022, this had risen to 53.47. So that's about a five point rise uh, where 10 is a grade. So on average, students at the Griffin School are now doing half a grade better than they were five years ago. So that represents significant progress. And you can see that in the Progress 8 scores. The summer 2022 projected Progress 8 score is 0.22. This projected score comes from uh, CISRA using all of the schools in the country who use CISRA data, which is going to be a 30-40% sample and therefore is likely to be very close to the final government figure. Uh, so that's really a very, very healthy result indeed. The 9-4 to four percentage in English is again at record levels and perhaps the one area you can see where the results aren't quite as good as the other areas is the maths where the 9-4 to four is 72% and that's actually fallen over this pattern. So maths obviously is our challenge area. If you look at English, you can see the P8, three slightly negative figures, then a very good strong figure in summer 2022. So that's real progress. We're very pleased with that. Uh, maths, as you say, has remained static from summer 2019. So that's going to be the priority area in the school development plan. The EBAC uh, obviously incorporates English and maths as well as sciences, humanities and languages. And that's strongly positive, which, you know, given the lower scores for English and maths, demonstrates the strength that we've shown in results in humanities and languages. Uh, the open slot in the Progress 8 score is getting a fantastic score for us. Our Progress 8 is 0 0.54, so students there are doing half a grade better than they would anywhere else on the country on average. So that, that's great, great progress. I'm also very pleased with the performance at the top end. You can see our number of nine grades has gone up, our eight grades has gone up, and our seven grades has gone up. So our summer 2022 performance was looking very good at the top end of the scale. We have done a, a breakdown by individual subject looking at progress against Aspire 20 targets. Now an Aspire 20 target is obviously a, a challenging target and a target that we don't necessarily reach. In 2019, on average, we were two thirds of a grade beneath that target. But in 2022, we were only 0.15 off the Aspire 20 targets on average. So we've improved there again by well over half a grade. There are a number of subjects there that have demonstrated outstanding performance. German, French, really strong languages performance, uh, which reflects years of hard work because it hasn't previously been strong. Again, you can see a computing and business have made very strong progress from where they've been historically. So those are great results. And then, you know, drama is always strong. Uh, economics there has got phenomenal results. 14 eights and 14 nines out of a sample of 59 students is just phenomenal. And you can see nearly across every subject, we've done pretty well there. Uh, in red at the bottom, you can see that the challenge for us is very squarely maths. And then the triple sciences, as opposed to the combined science, uh, were a little bit disappointing in the summer of 2022. That's a one-off result rather than a sustained pattern. Um, however, you know, the heads of sciences are looking at that very hard. Um, and thinking what they could do to improve those results. But generally, I think that's a, a strong performance against what were very challenging targets. If we look at the breakdown by prior attainment, it's quite interesting. Obviously, in terms of crude scores for attainment eight, HPAs are going to do better than MPAs, are going to do better than LPAs. 
uh, so that, that that's an inevitability. The Progress 8 is quite interesting. It looks very good at the top end, and if you, you like the lower prior attainers end, and not as strong in the middle. And that's almost the exact opposite of the historical pattern at the Griffin School. I think last year, having previously been disappointed by the results of boys at the top end, uh, that was a focus for us. And that, that positive score of 0.29 for HPAs very much reflects the fact that we have succeeded with that focus. Again, uh, you know, in years gone by, the performance of LPA students has been a focus for us and we seem to have solved that. And uh, now we're going to have to look at the MPAs and make sure we raise the MPAs to the level of the other two. The English Progress 8 scores are particularly interesting, done phenomenally well at the top end there. Uh, whereas the LPAs and the MPAs are fine because they're positive, but it's the top end where we've made a real difference. Uh, maths, the, the results reflect the overall pattern, uh, but they're lower. As I've already said, maths is a priority area for us. The EBAC again, we've done very well on the EBAC with uh, LPAs, which is very pleasing. Uh, you know, traditional curriculum uh, for the less able students, and to succeed with that is, is very pleasing indeed. Uh, the open bucket is pretty strong across the board, uh, but overall that, that's that's a good picture. We're, we're doing well at the extremes and the, there's nothing particularly there to talk about. If we look at the breakdown by gender, again we're very pleased with that. The female average attainment eight is slightly higher than the males, but the males progress eight is higher. So, you know, overall that's a pretty equal performance between male and female. Uh, as you can see, there was a gap in English where the females did better than the males, um, but that gap was absent in maths. Uh, so the English P8 was better for females than males, and that's something we need to reflect on, along with the fact that our HPA results for English were, were very good. Um, it's clear that uh, for high achieving girls, we're extremely good at English, and we'd still like to get a little bit better with all other groups. Uh, on the other hand, for maths, the data is really the other way around. It's it's the females who we need to work even harder at with the maths there. You can see for the EBAC and the Open where we've got solid data across both groups. Uh, but overall, as I say, the gender performance there is fairly equal. The progress equal, uh, the progress eights are both positive and they're not widely disparate. So I think that, that counts as good progress really. If we look at disadvantage, disadvantage is always a challenge. And there are very few places in the country that are eliminating the gap and you know eliminating the gap probably depends on having a particular type of disadvantaged students. Uh, our disadvantaged students uh, will you know typically be uh, white British uh, and coming from a sort of history of disadvantage uh, which perhaps are harder to fix than some of the other categories of disadvantaged students. Um, there's a gap in terms of attainment eight, and there's a gap in terms of progress eight. That's a gap of about 0.8 of a grade, which is more than we'd like it to be. We'd like, we'd obviously like to have a gap of naught, um, but a you know realistic target would be trying to reduce that gap to half a grade. And you can see that that sort of gap uh, carries across every subcategory. So the, the performance is about the same everywhere. There's a gap of about 0.8. Ish in English, Maths, EBAC and Open. So perhaps reflecting the characteristics of the students to some extent rather than the the uh, individual subjects. But nevertheless, disadvantage is an absolute priority for us. So if we go on to A-levels, uh, the results in the summer of 2022 were again a very, very promising. In terms of destinations, 121 students are going to university. 106 to their first choice, only six to insurance and nine to clearing. So that means in terms of pitching students applications at the appropriate institutions, we've got that pretty close to perfect. 39% of our students go to Russell Group Universities, three in Oxford and Cambridge, three medics, four architects. Uh, Bristol still currently the most popular university, Exeter also very popular, um, but we have got some students going to Sheffield or Edinburgh or, or wherever. Uh, a route that's increasing in popularity is the degree apprenticeship. I've just given you a couple of examples there. Uh, Tristan's gone for a degree apprenticeship with JP Morgan, which is a very lucrative career. And then Esme there is on to a nursing apprenticeship, which is extremely socially valuable. 
Uh, so we, we do anticipate that being a more popular route uh, over the coming year. So if we look at the performance compared to Aspire 20 targets, things actually look very, very good. You can see at the bottom that we are actually 0.25 above Aspire 20 targets. So the grades you would need to get for the school to be on the 20th percentile of schools in Britain, uh, we are doing better than that, uh, which is a, a phenomenal result, really. Um, looking at all of those subjects, I mean, there are lots of subjects there with great results. We've seen French and Spanish. As I said earlier, languages had a very strong year. Uh, the economics results are extremely good again. Um, arts, one where we've seen a lot of progress in recent years, etc. Generally a very set, a good set of pleasing results. The law one is a bit of an anomaly. We had a, a change of law teacher. They had one teacher in year 12 and then we had a sort of crossover in the first term of year 13 where one teacher left and we had a temporary teacher and then only after Christmas did we make a new permanent appointment. So we're very confident the law results are actually going to be very good in future. Um, that was just a one year anomaly. Uh, the maths at A level, rather like the maths at GCSE, remains a priority for the school to work on. So this is the ALPS rating of the summer 2022 results. It's giving us the same picture. If you look down the right hand column, you can see the overwhelming majority of subjects are to two or three. So in the, the red or hot band in ALPS speak, uh, which are excellent results. And the areas to work on there are just law and maths, which I've talked about previously. Uh, ancient history is a, a bit of a misnomer there, a bit of a, uh, you know, a, a sort of red herring. There are four students, um, one didn't turn up to do the exam <coughs> and therefore that biased the sample hugely. Um, the other students all got A or A star, so that's not really reflective of uh, what happened in ancient history. Breakdown by gender at A level, again looking pretty good. Um, slight advantage to females over males, but it's very small, ten is a grade. And so it's one and a bit, so a tenth of a grade, so that, that's minuscule. Value added actually slightly better for the boys than the girls, so again, very pleased with that. Uh, the breakdown of the, the various grades just reflects the fact that, that females did slightly better than boys. Uh, but in, in looking at that, we need to bear in mind that the male value added was actually better. Uh, so very much the same picture at GCSE, our, our sort of gender equality uh, is looking wrong. Disadvantage. Uh, has has transferred from key stage four into the sixth form. We can see the not disadvantaged students did better than the disadvantaged students. The value added here is a, a figure computed by CISRA, uh, but again there is there is a slight difference there, so that is definitely something that still remains a priority for us. And so, overall summary of the 2022 results, we can say GCSE progress rate overall is good and one of the best, if not the best, result in the school's history. Um, the A-level results are perhaps even stronger than the GCSE results. Phenomenal results above the Aspire 20 targets on average. Our gender breakdown looks good. Our HPA performance in terms of A-stars at A-level and 789 performance at GCSE looks really, really strong this year. Uh, a number of departments uh, have done very well and perhaps departments that haven't done well historically and so this reflects the sort of interventions put in place and the leadership of those heads of departments. So languages, business, economics, computing and English have all made definite progress on where they've been historically in the summer 2022 results. Areas to work on, our middle prior attainers have a, a positive progress rate, but we'd like to be, make it more positive. Our disadvantage breakdown is probably you know, in line with the national average, but we would like to be beating that. Uh, maths has raised issues at GCSE and A-level. I talk separately about separate science GCSEs and law A-level. Uh, but generally a very strong set of results and very, very clear areas for us to work on, which is going to make our intervention easier to coordinate. Okay, thank you for watching this results presentation.